Messing up your cloud migration can end your career, so you better get it right. Migrations can have too much downtime, and losing all of your file and folder permissions will mean a lot of extra work to remap everything, and won't you have to give other people access to your data? Well, before you go and run and hide in your panic room, here's my storage migration from my on-prem file server with multiple subfile levels and millions of files moving to the cloud securely right now. To get started, click here to build your new resource and search for Storage Mover. This is a new service that will migrate your NFS and SMB storage into the cloud with no downtime, saving your permissions, and never giving access to your data to anyone else. Just pick your subscription and resource group as always, and then give it a name and select your region, then click Next. Then select your Log Analytics workspace for monitoring. This is gonna keep track of all of your data copy logs, which is very important. Then click Next. Add your tags like you should for all of your cloud resources to track things like the cost center and the owner and how to get in touch with them. And then click Create. Now every migration process has five basic steps. So let's start with the discovery phase. And that's with the registered agents over on the left. Storage Mover is going to use these agents to get read access to your data and then copy all of that to your cloud file shares using AZ Copy. It's kind of like RoboCopy, but for cloud stuff. So how many agents are you actually gonna need? Well, that depends on how many sources you have and how many of them you want to move at the same time. Now, the laws of physics tell us that your best performance will always be to have two points close together as possible. So let's say you have five different file servers in five different locations, and you wanna collapse all of those into one file share in Azure as fast as possible then you'll need at least one agent for every file server. But what if one of those file servers has hundreds of millions of files and you need to get that done faster? Now there's no explicit limit on the number of files that a single agent can move, so it may take a while to process that 100 million files, but one agent will get the job done. Now if you want it to go even faster, you could give that agent more CPU and RAM, or you could set up multiple agents in that one location, focusing in on subfolders. Then you kind of divide and conquer. Now, what if you have a really huge data set, but a really slow internet connection? Well, then you can use the Azure Data Box service to copy that data and ship it over to Microsoft, who will then upload that data into your storage accounts. And then you can use the storage mover to sync up those final Delta changes and complete your migration. Now click right over here and download your agent, and this will come in as a virtual hard drive file that you can set up in Hyper-V today. And by the way, the VMware images are finishing all of their testing right now and will be available for preview soon, so stay tuned. Now the agent is a Linux-based appliance and the requirements are four cores and eight gigs of RAM with 20 disks that'll handle all of the copy processing. Now once you have the file downloaded, extract your virtual hard drive, and I'll open Hyper-V, create a new virtual machine, give your VM a name and pick a location for your files, then click Next. And as of today, you need to pick a Gen 1 Hyper-V VM for this. If you pick Gen 2, the appliance won't boot. And we'll have at least eight gigs of RAM here, but you can give it more if you need it to work faster. Then select your network setup and click Next. Then select the VHD file that you already downloaded and just click through and create. Now go to your VM's settings, and you need to change the CPU cores to a minimum of four, and then just start her up. Now at the login prompt here, the username is admin, and the default password is also admin, and then you should go through the password change process and make it something way more secure. Then it's a good idea to go to your network configuration and test your connectivity. And this is exactly what you wanna see. Everything's okay, and we're good to go. Then you can just quit back to the main menu. And next we need to register our agent. And you can just press enter here on the first prompt for your enter ID tenant. It'll figure it out, but you do need to supply your subscription ID. Now back here in the portal, you go to the storage mover overview blade and you can see it right there. Just type that into your agent. Next, it wants your resource group name and just repeat the same process along with the name of your storage mover. Now, this is what you want the agent to be called inside the Azure portal. 
The next one relates to a feature in Azure Files that's called Private Link, which sets up a dedicated IP address within your virtual network for you to privately communicate with. And if you have one, you need to supply the entire resource ID for the Private Link scope. I don't in this particular environment, so I'll just press Enter. Now it wants you to open a web browser and go to microsoft.com slash device login, and then use this code to sign in, provide it your credentials, and then you can close the window. In a few seconds, registration is complete and you can go back to the portal. And of course, you need to repeat these steps for all of your other agents. And now that we have those agents, we need a plan. So click right here and create one. Give it a name and a description and then click create. Now all of this processing is done through migration jobs where we tell the agent what source and target we want it to use and then it just gets to work. So we're gonna need a name for that and a description and then click and select your agent from the dropdown and click next. Here we'll provide that source file server and share information and then you pick if this is a NFS or SMB and since SMB requires authentication, we'll need credentials. Now here is my Azure Key Vault that I've already created for this. Over on the left, go to Secrets, and we're gonna need two of them, one for the username and for the password. And if you've never created one, it's real easy. Click Create at the top. This is gonna be a manual operation, and I like to make the name something easy to understand. The secret value is the name of the actual user who has read access in my file share. Then just click Create, and do the same thing for your password. And go back to your migration job, select your key vault, and then select the username secret. Scroll down a little bit and select the password secret. You can even add a description if you like. Then scroll to the bottom. Now down here, you can see the UNC path to the share that the agent is going to use. And the agent will work to copy that entire file share and all of its subfolders and all of its contents. But remember, I said earlier that if you have a massive file share, and you want everything to go through faster, you could have multiple agents. Well, to do that the right way, you'd want to assign each agent to a subfolder so that the two agents don't overlap each other, because that'll lead to problems that we'll see in a second. Then just click Next. The target endpoint is asking where in Azure Files do we want to copy this data to? Select your subscription and the storage account you want to use, and then select the target file share add a description, and again, you can add in a subpath if you need to. Then just click Next. Now you have to select the copy mode, and this is either Merge or Mirror. Now there's a lot to read on this page so you know exactly what's happening, but at a high level, Mirror is where we will make the target match the source, and Merge is where we're adding data from the source into the target, just like RoboCopy. So if you're bringing in data from multiple sources into a single target, you'd wanna do Merge because Mirror will delete the data from source one and replace it with data from source two. So read through everything here so you know exactly what kind of migration you want and click Next. And of course, you should now review everything to make sure all the details are correct, then Create. Now you're ready to start your migration. But first, click over here on the storage endpoints on the left. You've got tabs here for the source and target endpoints that we just created as part of our project but you can also click at the top to create them. And then you can add those in as jobs to your project later on. And that way you have a lot of control in planning out your migration from end to end. Back in the project, click on the job. And there are two main tabs here right now, the properties where you see all the data and the job run history, which we'll look at in a second. And the only thing to do here is click start job at the top. Now the agent will authenticate with the Key Vault credentials over to your file share, and it does only need read access, and then it'll start copying the files over to your target. And the cool thing is your users can just keep on working. If the agent runs into something like a file lock situation, no problem, because the job can be run as many times as you want. So the job has been issued to the agent and you can also go over to the agent and check it out. On the main screen here, look at service and job status and then the job summary and there's your job ID. Back in the portal, things are in progress and there's lots of more data here on the new monitoring tab. And there are jobs completed successfully. Now over in the run history tab, you can see all of the times you tried to run the job. And you see I've got one failed and one success. Now, anything that goes wrong, files aren't copied, any kind of issue you run into is a failed job. 
So if you click on that at the top, you'll have a link that you can go to and that'll pull in all that data from your Log Analytics workspace about your copy jobs. And the important thing is right over here where it gives the job error code. And you can click the mitigation link at the top. That'll bring you to the troubleshooting guide. And you can just search for the code, which in this case says I've got a Key Vault permissions issue. So if I jump back to my Key Vault, then take a look at the access configuration. Here it shows that I'm using the Vault's access policy instead of RBAC, and that is the problem. And then I can look at access control and look at the role assignments. And what you should have here is the role of secret user, and that should be assigned to whatever you called your agent. Now over on the storage account that we're using, just look at the file share and go to access control and then check your role assignments. And you should have here the data privileged contributor, again, assigned to your agent. And with those three things in place, I was able to rerun my job and get it to run successfully. And since you're such an expert now on these kind of migrations, you should watch this video because the end of server support is coming and you need to migrate your VMs and your domain controllers before that bomb goes off. Happy learning.